Hi, back again, it is the Irish guy. And lads, let's make a deal. Slap that fat, big, red subscribe button if you agree with this statement. Being nice does not suit Conor McGregor. Am I right? What makes Conor McGregor Conor McGregor is his mouth. No, 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 not that. Christ, that makes him look like he just brushed his teeth with yogurt. But look at this, right? After the fight with Dustin Poirier in January. I'm very happy for you, Dustin. You're a f warrior. You've got passion, courage, everything it takes. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This guy just had his calf kicked into the shape of a deflated tea cozy in front of 12 million people. And he's congratulating Poirier, saying he's happy for him. Oh, yes, thank you, Mr. Poirier, for making me look like a caravan dwelling bum. And no, not the badass ones out of Snatch, the ones who spend their days wiping the ass of cows and have about seven teeth in their heads. I'm not saying you shouldn't show respect to your opponent, but this entire facade was about as credible as Kanye's run for president. This isn't respect, none of this is respect, and I'll tell you why. When he faced Poirier in 2014, McGregor was a 26-year-old up-and-coming athlete embarking on just his fourth ever UFC bout, and had the hunger of a malnourished Oliver Twist. Sure, he was gradually fattening his bank account, but let's not forget, he was only a few years out from fixing toilets on the west coast of Wicklow. He was only now beginning to enter the world of mixed martial arts on a global scale. No longer fighting the likes of Steve O'Keefe at some dusty London gym, or getting beaten up by Joe Duffy in Cork in the winter of 2010. But now, the man is still weighed down by that Floyd Mayweather paycheck to the point where any sense of hunger and determination he might once have had has just been replaced with an ego the size of a fat pumpkin. And since the last four years have been a catalogue of house parties, court cases, vandalising buses, month-long vacations and losing fights, now we've since discovered that the people's champion also has the hormones of a heavily pregnant calf. Ever since his embarrassing whiskey fueled tirade at Khabib, McGregor has since chosen his opponents carefully. And by carefully, I mean easily. A nearly 40 year old journeyman like Donald Cowboy Cerrone. This is a fella who's been beaten up 15 times. He's an old man. His first official fight was in February 2006 when McGregor was sitting in his bastard leaving cert. And then Poirier, a fella he'd already dispatched with ease seven years earlier. You might say he showed these men respect, playing the role of Mr. Nice Guy in the press conferences, but, but that's wrong. He showed these men the least amount of respect. Because when McGregor feels threatened by an opponent, when he understands there's a real danger of getting flattened, he goes to war with them, both inside the octagon and out. He launches the trash talk as a way of mentally deconstructing them. Because he knows his own skills aren't enough. Good Chris, Josie Aldo hadn't lost a match in 10 years. And McGregor was threatening to invade his Brazilian favela on horseback. Floyd Mayweather, 49 and 0 at the time, and he spent an entire week bullying him on stage across Europe. Khabib, an undefeated MMA fighter who strangles the life out of everyone put in his path. And McGregor throws a trolley at his bus and compares his wife to a towel. So now, by treating both Cerrone and Poyer as if they were both in his Bebo Top 16, he was basically saying, neither of you are worth the trash talk. I can easily beat both into a pulp myself. It's just the plan backfired and McGregor gets his calf burst like a balloon. No more Mr. Nice Guy. <sighs> yep. Long story short, what has happened? Poirier has a charity for... And McGregor, probably since his public image, has been repeatedly flushed down the toilet for years, even to the point where True Geordie, a man who gladly queue up to lick his toes in the shower, even he's turned against him. So that's how you know his PR is, but anyway, Anyway, he said during the presser that his team would donate half a million dollars to Four Years Charity. Very nice. That was back in December. And Poirier, he said something to say. That's a fun prediction. You also predicted a donation to my foundation and you and your team stopped responding after the fight in January. See you soon. July 10th, paid in full. This, um... This is the worst thing Dustin Poirier could have done. This man is currently standing on the edge of greatness. He's just turned down a title fight to have a go at the McGregor trilogy four months ago. This guy, he wasn't seen as a bum, but definitely not a world-class MMA artist. But now, he's suddenly seen as someone who can lay claim to the throne in the lightweight division. When McGregor dispatched him inside two minutes back in 2014, before going on to morph into one of the biggest top three stars on planet Earth, maybe after Ronaldo and Justin Bieber, imagine telling Poirier then that one day he'd still go on to come out on top against McGregor in a trilogy. It's the stuff of fantasy. But considering this is a pale imitation of McGregor, a shadow, I thought I'd spent half his life in a bastard yacht. And I'm pretty confident Poirier would have achieved this feat in July, but now uh, the fight is off. A donation, not a debt. We've been awaiting the plans for the money that never came. I do with all my donations. Know where it's going dot for dot. Otherwise it goes walking. As is the case with a lot of these foundations, sadly. You took the Maji over the belt. Shows I was right. 
points. And then Poirier hits back. 100% never a dead, you offered me accepted. And like I said, your team never responded to our emails. Regarding the process of where funds would be put to work, July 10th you will taste defeat yet again. Okay, sure, they're bickering like a couple of teenage internet trolls procrastinating from the geography homework. But, um, fast forward a couple of hours. You're ripped, you inbred hillbilly. Why do you wink with your ears, you f***ing brain dead hillbilly? 500k with no plan in place? E hang tight, fool. You must be new to money. The fight is off, by the way. I'm gonna fight someone else on the 10th. Good luck in your old contract, kid. So, is that it? Is that where the trilogy dies? On Twitter? Let's not make any mistake about this. In the immediate week after his embarrassing knockout, you know, getting ridiculed by Jake Paul on the internet, McGregor was relishing an exciting trilogy fight. But make no mistake about it, if you told the Dubliner at Christmas that he'd have to fight Poirier again in July, he'd have probably shoved a candle down his throat. This was not the fight he wanted. He wanted a season of fights. Not six months and two bouts to finally see off a guy who he'd beaten up inside 90 seconds seven years ago. Dealing with Poirier again is a chore he did not want. But now, he needs this fight. This is McGregor's redemption. Beating Poirier is everything to prove that he's not finished. That he does know how to counter a basic calf kick. He needs to win this rematch. He needs it. But if this is true, and he has flushed the trilogy down the sink in favour of a fight with Diego Sanchez, he's 40! He's 40 years of age! Dress your f is that what McGregor's career consists of now? Trying to beat up old men? Sanchez hasn't won three consecutive back-to-back -back fights since June 2009. I mean, come on. Sure, he's a fella who won his first 17 fights on the bounce. He was probably all the rage in 2006, being tipped to put down an unstoppable world-class legacy, but that unbeaten run came to an end in April 2007. And since then, he successfully coded his career in more L's than a Welsh road sign. And the sad thing is, if McGregor keeps going with his half-hearted uh, attitude to the sport now, then when he hangs Hangs up the gloves. Sure, he'll be wealthier than some governments, but he'll have successfully spread defeats and losses over his final years, utterly blotching his once proud CV and legacy in ugly, embarrassing failures. Let's not forget, before the big money Floyd fight, McGregor had only lost one fight in seven years. Now, it's four defeats in five years, and if he loses this summer, <sighs> Five defeats in six. But does he care? Does he really care about losing now? Is it all about the paycheck? Because a few weeks ago, the guy was frothing at the mouth to get in the boxing ring with Manny Pacquiao. You know, one of the greatest boxers of all time. Versus a man with less professional boxing wins than KSI. I mean, come on. It's official. He prioritizes money over sporting integrity and pride. And I swear to God, if his comfy lifestyle and refusal to quit leads to him getting beaten up by Jake Paul in a boxing match, then I'm sorry, I don't care how amazing his peak was. His legacy will officially be ruined. But that's... That's for another video. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think the McGregor Poirier fight is off? Is this a horrible shadow of the fighter he once was? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what other topical videos to do on, uh, on this channel. Uh, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.